Greetings, beloved. Welcome back. I'm Chelsea. Freedom is calling you right now. Beloved, have you ever had a burden? I mean, a heavy one that was unrelenting. Last week, I spoke to you about when God does not remove the cup. Today, I want to talk to you about burdens that God will allow you to carry and burdens that God will intentionally give you to carry. All for the purpose of utilizing you as a conduit. All for the purpose of seeing his purpose come to pass in the earth, not just for you, but for others. There are those burdens that we have sometimes. There are those cups in front of us that we have sometimes that God will not take away. We just have to go through the process. And it's to remold us. It's to make us. It's to transform us. For God's glory, of course, but for our good. Today, I'm not just talking to you about those type of burdens that's just for your good and only for God's glory. I'm talking to you today specifically about the burdens that are for your good, always for God's glory, but also for others. Sometimes we carry burdens for others. God will allow us to carry burdens for others. God will use circumstances that we have gone through, circumstances that have burdened us. He will utilize it to help others. Beloved, one of the best movies that I've seen in the last, I'd say the last couple of years, has been the movie Harriet, a movie about Harriet Tubman. That, beloved, was a movie about a woman who carried a burden. She carried a burden in two ways. One, for herself, because she was not a free person. She was a slave. Being in any type of slavery, being enslaved in any way, shape, or form, that in and of itself is a burden. So she had that burden, that was her personal burden, which she bore. Then beyond that, as she began to run for freedom, because she wanted her children to be born free, because she couldn't accept the life of being a slave anymore, because she herself was supposed to be set free. Then that burden that she bore, that was initially just concerning her, ended up being a burden that she bore for other people, for the black race. She realized that it wasn't just about her. If you have not seen the movie, I highly, highly recommend you see this movie. There's such spiritual component in it. There's such heart. There's such spirit. That movie really changed my life. It really caused me to start looking into burdens that have been placed in my life, burdens that have been placed in the lives of others, and also into my relationship with the Lord. During this movie, Harriet had a very intimate relationship with the Lord. She always looked to the Lord for direction. People thought she was crazy. She was not. She looked to the Lord for direction. He guided her. He carried her every step of the way. So, beloved, let's go ahead and jump into the Word of God today. I always like to get into the Word of God because this right here, this is our source. This right here, this is the burden breaker. This is the yoke breaker, the yoke remover. I want us to look at the life today of someone who, you know, I love this character from the Bible, David. We're going to talk about him before he became King David. During this time, beloved, Saul was king. During this time, the Philistine army the Philistine people, they were a snare to the Israelites. One person in that Philistine army in particular was Goliath. He was a big, massive giant that would go out and he would taunt the Israelite people. He would curse them by his gods. He would curse our God, the true and the living God. The people were afraid of him, naturally, because he was so big and so tall. I'm sure he had murdered many people in the area. 
they were disturbed. They were burdened by the fact that Goliath would come out and taunt them in the mornings. Again, he would curse their God, our God. I'm sure he had all kinds of disrespectful and disorderly things to say to them. So they were carrying that burden, the Israelites, they had that burden of them, on them, of being afraid of this big scary giant. But no one really did anything about it. You see, beloved, you can have a burden that's placed on you and not do anything about it, either number one, because you haven't yet realized what to do about it. Or number two, because you're too fearful to try to even seek knowledge to find out what to do about it. When you seek knowledge, it should always come from up above. It should always come from God. He'll often send you in the direction to use men, but you're seeking God to find out what comes next. What should you do with the situation that's going on? Sometimes it will be just a sovereign word that he gives you. Do this, this, and this, or be still, be silent. I will remove this. Sometimes it is going to be that he'll send you, look here and look here. I'm going to give this man to you. I'm going to send you to that man, and they will instruct you. But you always seek knowledge from above first. So I want us to take a look here, beloved, today in 1 Samuel, starting in, uh, let's go here, 16.6. At this point now, Goliath has been taunting the Israelite army. As I said before, they're afraid when he comes out in the morning. He's this big, scary giant. So the Israelite army, there are a couple of them in an area, and they're talking about what Saul, the king, would do for a man who would take down this big giant, their enemy, Goliath. Now this little boy, David, he goes to the Israelite army. His father sends him with some supplies and some things for his brothers who are also in the army. So he goes and he hears these soldiers talking about Saul's going to do this. He's going to give this for the person who takes down Goliath. His ears perk up. Additionally, the burden of what's going on now starts to fall on David. He starts to hear these things about who he calls the uncircumcised Philistine, cursing his God. Like, how dare you curse my God? I wish more people today were like that. I wish more of us Christians were like that when people curse our God. There are times when you say nothing. We know that because Jesus was before his accusers. And when they spoke negatively about him, when they even questioned him, there was a time when he said nothing, because sometimes when you deal with fools, the best wisdom is to say nothing at all. Don't even acknowledge them. But there are also those times when you have to confront it. There was another time when Jesus confronted it. He confronted his accusers, and he spoke in his authority. He spoke in the wisdom of God. So here, beloved, David now has that burden on him. This uncircumcised Philistine is cursing my God. Who does he think he is? I can't stand here and let this happen. So let's pick up here, beloved. 1 Samuel 16, 6 says this. When they arrived, actually, yeah, I have the wrong scripture. I'm sorry. Let's go to 1 Samuel 17, 32. It says this. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on the account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. So he's already telling the king, hey, don't let anyone lose heart. I'm going to go take care of this. I'm going to go get rid of this burden right here, right now. So we pick up here, beloved, and it says, Saul replied, you're not able to go out against the Philistine and fight him. You're only a boy, and he has been fighting. He has been a fighting man from his youth. Sometimes when God gives you that burden and God comes on you with that burden. You start inquiring of the Lord now what to do about this burden. He starts telling you that this is what you need to do. This is how you need to respond. Sometimes when you share that with other people, they're going to underestimate you. They'll tell you things like, are you kidding me? No one in the history of the creation has ever been able to do this, or no one in your family has ever been able to do this. So you think that you're going to do this now? Who do you think you are? 
if you saw the movie Harriet, it was kind of the same scenario after she crossed over and got her freedom and she went and got her, her parents and a couple of other slaves to freedom. She wanted to keep going because that burden was still on her and it got to a point where they were like, okay, now lady, who do you think you are? Like, yes, you got this far, but now who do you think you are? Be real now. There is some validity to that. But when God himself places the burden on you, when God himself is the one that's leading you and directing you where to go, what to do, how to say, how to do, watch what happens. So we pick up here, but David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off the sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defiled the armies of the living God. So here's David. He keeps going. He says, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. Saul, sell, Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. What I love about this story right here is that David had a burden on him from his youth. He was a youth then, but from earlier age, because he says here to Saul, I have been keeping my father's sheep all this time. It's no easy task to keep sheep. You may be in a job right now and there's a burden on you, but there's a purpose for it. God is allowing that burden for a purpose. So he says, I, listen, I've been keeping my father's sheep all this time. When the bear and the lion came to attack my father's sheep, I took it down. He goes on. It's not just one time, listen, I've got this. Listen, I can do this. He continually echoes his confidence because the burden is there. The passion is there. The knowing is there. But he doesn't leave it here. He doesn't just say, hey, I did it in my own strength. It was my hands and my power because I'm all that. I'm this strong. I can do it because I can do it. Because I can do it on my own. No, beloved, he goes on here to say that it was God who helped him. He said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. When God gives you a burden, you're not going to carry out the works to eradicate that burden on your own. God has given you that burden so that you will turn to him for help. God allows that burden so that you will partner with him for deliverance, but not just for your people. If we look at this, beloved, David was a young boy here. He was burdened, sure, by the fact that the Philistine, the uncircumcised Philistine, was cursing his God. But at the end of the day, David could have just dropped off those supplies to his brothers and said, see ya. I'm upset. Yes, I don't like it that the adversary is cursing my God. But hey, I'm not in the army. That's your problem. But no, beloved, God allowed that burden to fall on him stronger. He started to give him passion. I spoke about passion maybe two weeks ago, how the passion began to rise up in him and that confidence began to continue to march forward. Even when Saul, who was the king of the Israelite army at the time, even when he told him, hey, you can't do this, you're but a boy. Goliath is a fighting man. He's been fighting all of his life. You are just a boy. That burden began to grow deeper in King David and he realized that this is not just about me anymore. I'm not going to take the easy route out. I'm not just going to close my eyes because I see that others are being burdened by this. I see that my people are being burdened by this and I acknowledge, I realize and acknowledge that God is calling me. He's calling me to remove this burden, not only from me, but to remove this burden from my people. It's not all about me anymore. I'm a burden bearer because of God's people. I'm a burden bearer because of my family. Sometimes, beloved, 
there will be situations where people will bear burdens. Like as an example, there may be someone watching me right now who has a parent who was a drug addict or a parent who was mentally ill and growing up under that burden causes you now to become an adult who wants to get involved in something like mental counseling or, or something having to do with mental health because you bear that burden while you were a child and now you wanna help other people because that burden is still there. That burden has now grown from being just about you to being about other people. You don't want to see other people suffer that way. You don't wanna see the individual suffer that way who are having to deal with that illness by themselves and you don't want to see their families so it's not just about you it's not just about one person it's not just about one family but it's about the masses sometimes in ministry beloved I should say all the time in ministry God gives burdens these are the kinds of burdens that burn in people's hearts. You may have a natural burden because something has happened in your life or because something's going on. You grew up poor and you hated every moment of it, so you want to help people to get out of poverty. Or it could be a spiritual burden. Something is burning in your heart. There are people in the ministry and outside of the ministry too, people who aren't in the official fivefold ministry serving in a physical building or with a physical organization. But all of us work in ministry. We're all called to be ministers of God. So God will give you a burden as an example for evangelism where you just want to get people saved day and night. That's all you want to do. You're just wired for it. You're geared for it. You get on the bus, you're talking to people about Christ. You get on the subway, you're talking to people about Christ. You get on the plane, you're talking to people about Christ. You go to the park, you go to a restaurant, you're evangelizing. That's a burden that God gives. Now, I personally don't have that burden. Not to that degree. I definitely want to see people get saved. We always do a salvation call at the end of every Sunday program. But it's not burning in my heart to the degree where this is the burden that God has given me to go after lost souls every day in any way, shape, or form. My burden is more so for the heart of God. I burn for the heart of God. I burn for intimacy with God. I burn to see people have true relationships with God where it's not just that they're going to church and that they're just reading through their Bible and they're reading through it mindlessly. I burn to see people have a true connection with God. I burn to see people worship God in spirit and truth. I burn for people to be free. I burn for people to take the Bible and see the promises that are in here and not just know that they're in here and not just blab it and then don't grab it. I burn for people to see manifestation of the Word of God, the power of God, the true and the living God in their lives. I burn for people to be true Christians at heart, one with Jesus. That's the burden that God has placed on me. And in that being able to hear the voice of God because you can't be intimate with someone and not hear their voice. You can't be intimate with someone and not commune with them every day throughout the day. That's my burden and I'm so grateful for it. But each of you watching me Every single person under the sound of my voice, God has placed a burden in your heart for something. Now again, you could have a natural burden. You could have gone through a certain situation in life that was a burden. God allowed it. Or perhaps you stayed in it because you didn't have the revelation or the wisdom you needed to get out of it but God will use it. He'll still use the things that have burdened you in the past for a bigger purpose, even for your purpose in life. But aside from that, God has also put a burden in your heart for something. It doesn't always have to be on a massive scale. 
It could be something small in your own eyes, but it's really something big. You could be carrying a burden to see the elderly treated better. You could be carrying a burden to see the elderly hugged and loved. And because of that, what you should do is ask God how to respond. You could go volunteer at a hospital. You could start with your own family, making sure that all the elderly in your family are taken care of, that they feel loved, that you're visiting them, that you're checking up on them or doing whatever you need to do with the resources that God has placed in your hands and in your life. Your burden could be for the homeless. Your burden could be for children who are in the foster care system. Your burden could very well be for evangelism, for the lost. Your burden could be for people who think they need to take abortion, but they have no one to talk to, they have no one to minister to them. Your burden could be for the drug addicts. Your burden could be for those who are far away from Christ, the backsliders, to bring them back. Your burden could be domestic. It could be something in the home. Your burden could be to show people the proper order of the home, the proper order of rearing children, godly children. Every single one of you has a burden that God has placed in your heart. And my prayer for you today is that you will respond to that burden. Because we see here in the Bible, beloved, the burden was on these Israelites for a while, but they were just afraid of it. Some probably just ignored it. Some hoped that it would just go away. So you see, you could have a burden and never respond to it. You could die with your burden still in you. But why would you want to? When you allow God to take your hand and transform that burden into something else, to so couple it with passion and let that thing evolve into something else, then you start getting so much joy out of it. That's not to say that it won't be work, but inside, in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit, there will be a satisfaction, there will be a release, because you feel like you're releasing the burden off of yourself because you're walking out what it is you're supposed to do. We were all called to be burden bearers in some way, shape, or form. There's someone watching me right now, and God has called you to be a burden bearer in the form of prayer. God gives you dreams. God speaks to you about things. You look around, and you see things that are happening in the world, even in this corona situation, and you have not been praying. God's been knocking at your door. The Holy Spirit has been nudging you at certain times to get up and pray, at certain times to pray through longer than an hour, but you have not responded. What happens sometimes, beloved, is that God will give a man a burden, and God doesn't force himself on anyone, okay? He's an awesome God. He gives us free will. So if you don't respond to a call or to a burden, there's someone out there who will. God will give you a chance to respond and then he'll move on to someone else. I'm reminded of a story I heard Catherine Coleman speak about. She said in a program I had watched with her that she recorded many years ago before I was born that she was not God's choice to be used in the mighty way that she was in the healing ministry. She said the Lord told her that he had called a man for that ministry but the man turned God down the man said no so God came and asked her if she was willing I'm also reminded beloved of a story I heard John Paul Jackson my beloved John Paul Jackson tell he said that the Lord went to his mom before he was born and said to her there's a prophet who I need to birth into the earth at this time are you willing to be my conduit? Are you willing to be my, essentially, burden bearer? Because pregnancy is not an easy task. Are you willing to be the person to host my prophet? The Lord promised her that she was going to have an easy pregnancy, as easy as possible, and that the boy, the prophet, would be a joy to raise. So his mother said, yes, I will do it. 
as Mary said, the mother of Jesus, be it unto me as you have said, Lord. So it's up to us to accept the burden. It's up to us to accept the assignment that God has given us. ministering to some of you even right now as I speak he's bringing to your remembrance things that he has been nudging you about over the years you see God is he's a patient God he's an understanding God he knows that we wrestle not against flesh and blood alone but principalities and powers and rulers and darkness and high places he knows that. So he's not the type of God that's just going to tell you something once or nudge you once or twice and then if you say no, he's going to back off. He's going to give you an opportunity, beloved, to respond because sometimes the enemy will come and make you think that, okay, that thought wasn't from God or that's too hard. Why don't you just do you, do your life, you're happy, so why don't you just keep carrying on with you being happy? Don't worry about anybody else. The enemy comes with a voice of selfishness. So even as I'm speaking right now, God is bringing to your remembrance, some of you, how he has come to you time and time again in various different ways to speak to you about a burden that you're carrying and what he wants to do with it, the assignment for it, the purpose for it, how he wants to use you, how he wants to use and transform you through the burden that you're carrying. There's a woman watching me. God wants to use you for inner healing. You had to go through the process yourself. It was long. It was hard. But God brought you through. God transformed you. God made you new. And now he wants to use you. There's so much power that he wants to flow through you. There's so much love that he's placed in you to give. God is saying, just yield to him today. He wants to use you in a magnificent way. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Well, beloved, I pray this word, I pray this message has been a blessing to you today. I pray that you'll take it and you'll do something with it. Honestly, my heart, beloved, is not just to sit here and say a couple of words. I don't want to talk just to talk. I want to say what God is saying to say for now. I don't want to give you stale messages. I don't just want to pull words out of the Bible for you. I pray, I seek the Lord, and I ask him, what do you want me to say to your people today? So I pray that you receive what God wants you to receive from every program but also that you respond to the word. James 1, 22 to 23 says, don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer also. My heart, beloved, is for you to respond in whatever way God wants you to respond to these messages. My prayer for you is that you hear the voice of God for yourself. My prayer for you is that you maximize the promises of the word of God in your life. My prayer for you is that you walk in your purpose. Mm. All right, beloved, it's Sunday. So if you have never been born again, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity right here, right now. And then afterwards, I'm going to pray for you that God will begin to speak to you about whatever burden you're carrying, whatever burden he's lighting up on the inside of you. So close your eyes, beloved, bow your head, and repeat after me. Father God in heaven, thank you. Lord, I am a sinner. I need a savior. Please forgive me of my sins. Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died on the cross for me and was risen again on the third day. Jesus, come into my heart. Wash me with your blood. Be my Lord and Savior.
Baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Empower me to live for you. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Amen, beloved. And now I'm going to pray for you. Father, thank you for your children watching. Thank you, God, that they are the apple of your eye. Lord, thank you for the burdens that you have placed in each and every one of them. Thank you, O oh God, for the burdens that were not caused by you. The burdens, O oh God, that you're delivering them from. Your word, O oh God, says that you will cause all things to work together for good. For those, God, who will walk uprightly before you. For those who, called, who are called according to your name. For those who will walk in your purpose. Lord, I ask you today to speak to your people about the burdens that you've placed in their lives. Speak to them, Lord. Show them the intent of those burdens. Holy Spirit, rest on them that they may call out to you for partnership. Open the eyes of their understanding, O God. Give them a spirit of wisdom and of revelation that they may know you and the hope of your calling. Speak to them, O Lord. Empower them with everything they need. Give them the resources. Give them, O God, the destiny connectors. Give them, O God, even the burden bearers that should walk alongside them. Whisper to them, O Holy Spirit, what the next step should be. Take their hand and lead them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, beloved. Again, I pray this program has been a blessing to you. I just love connecting with you here every single week right here in my dad. It's a joy to do life with you. May the Lord bless you and prosper you this week. May you find favor and success in all things that God has called you to do. God bless you. I love you. And I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye for now.